AI. So let's give a round of applause to welcome. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the workshop on generative AI and large language models. I'm Jing Jing from MasterCard, and uh, I'm, I'm currently still, still a student in AUS, a master program, master in science on business analytics. So a very warm welcome today. Uh, we will, today's agenda starts from the brief in the in brief history of generative AI, then how does it come from supervised learning to large language models, and the use case of generative AI in FinTech, and how we use large language models in generative AI projects. And we have a simple code session on retrieval augmented generation. The, the last part is dimensions of responsible AI. So firstly, a brief history of generative AI. So very early on, there were scientists tried to uh, simulate neural networks using electrical circuits. Not until 1950s, when the computers become more advanced, then people start to use computers to simulate the neural networks. But for more than half a century, deep learning is still a impractical dream that not many people use it. Not until in 2012, uh, Alex Knight won the ImageNet competition, and this co Alex Knight uh, showed to the world that uh, deep learning can actually be very useful. It can categorize objects into a thousand categories with the training data, with a big training data from ImageNet. And then in 2017, there was a well-known paper called Attention is All You Need. So in this paper, Google Brain introduced a very novel uh, neural network architecture called a transformer. And it used a self-attention mechanism, uh, which is very suited for language understanding. And then uh, comes the familiar name, OpenAI. It becomes one of the 100 most influential company in 2022. Uh, it released ChatGPT in 2022, November. And just after 104 days, it released GPT-4 in 2023. The current interest in AI is largely triggered by the rise of ChatGPT because of its phenomenal performance and uh, great accessibility. It makes AI more credible to average users. GPT 3.5 was the original model that ChatGPT was built on, and it was a pure language model. It only processed language. And when GPT 4 came about, it's a multi-model multi model, which means it can process text and images. And its context window is also longer. It can produce, process longer, question and produce longer output. However, it is uh, only accessible via subscription to GPT Plus or use Bing Chat with a usage cap, or you can access from APIs, uh, but on a pay-per-use basis. Later, we will sit together in the coding session. And although you don't need to know, but GPT stands for generative pre-trained transformer. Generative means this is a model that generates new data based on user's input. And uh, because GPT is trained on text, that's why it produces text. There are other models trained on images, which can produce images. And also there are music, LM generates music or audio. And P stands for pre-trained. It means it's trained on a static data set. It's not learning from real-time data. As we know that um, it produces outdated data because previous GPT 3.5 data ends in uh, 
September 2021 and the GPT-4 data ends in April 2027, uh, 23. So if you want want most updated data, uh, then you need to think of other ways. And transformer, I have mentioned it before, it's, it's an architecture introduced by Google Brain and it's used a self-attention mechanism It's, uh, it makes uh, interpreting sequential data a lot easier. It's, originally, it was very difficult to interpret sequential text language data compared to transaction data, weather readings, or uh, stocks data. It's because for language text, it's harder to represent, in, represent it in a computer-readable format. And also, there are contextual meaning between the words is hard to capture the long-term dependency, which means uh, the meaning of this word can be related to some, some words a lot, appeared a long time earlier. So self-attention solved this issue. Uh, it is a mechanism in transformer that uh, allow the model to weigh the importance of each word relative to all the other words in the sequence. So each word can directly attend to all the words in the sentence. So in this way, we can see that this it is very uh, related to animal. This is how the contextual information is captured. Okay, if you know about machine learning and AI, this graph should be very familiar to you. Uh, let's, we can see that machine learning is a subfield of AI and deep learning is a subfield of machine learning. So where does generative AI locate? Okay. Where should I put generative AI? Uh, it is a deep learning model that uh, produce output based on the data they have trained on. There are multiple layers and they rely on very large data set. Uh, it turns out that the supervised learning is a very basic technique we used to eventually train a large language model. And supervised learning, as we all know, it's using our input and output um, to train a machine learning model to label things. So for instance, if for span filtering, what we do is to uh, label an email, zero or one, zero means it's not a span, one means it's a span, and for, Online advertising, we predict whether this user will click this ad so that we give more relevant ads to the users to increase the click-through rate, which generates a lot of revenue for the online advertising forms. And for self-driving cars, we use the image and the radar information from and to train the model and allow the model to determine the position of the other cars. And in healthcare, we use X-ray images to make diagnosis. And for manufacturing, we can use images of phones to detect cracks or any uh, defect on the phone for visual inspection. And for speech recognition, we, have, uh, we can translate the audio into text using machine learning. And if you are running any business businesses that requires uh, rating reviews or for your products or services, then machine learning is also very useful to determine whether the review is positive or negative so that you can do reputation monitoring. Okay, so supervised learning is a basic technique that we should know for training RMs, but um, why this is not a 
new idea supervised learning. Why uh, uh, applications like ChatGPT didn't appear like 10 years ago? A big problem is uh, the big bottleneck is the computing resources. Uh, without the cheap storage, memory processes, GPU, TPUs, and even now we have language processing unit, um, we can't it's not possible to train and deploy a large language model such as GPT. And also beyond that, we also uh, for better and quicker development and deployment, uh, open uh, cloud platforms such as uh, Microsoft's Azure uh, is very useful. It cut off years of the development time. And besides, uh, it's very also, also very important to get access to large scale data sets. Because of the internet and big data, now we have plenty of labeled and unlabeled data we can use to train our model with large samples of real world examples. And next, uh, we have increased computational efficiencies by optimization techniques. We have um, parallel processing, distributed computing, and uh, model compression, which help us to uh, develop better and faster. And lastly, but not, uh, but not least, research collaborations and knowledge sharing. Uh, as I mentioned before, GPT uh, Transformer was open sourced by Google, but five years later, OpenAI created ChatGPT. So this cannot happen without this open source effort. What else has contributed to the generative AI today? Uh, in 2010 to 2020s, this was a period of large scale supervised learning. Before that, uh, a lot of models are relatively small. And although we have a large amount of data, when we uh, fit the data to the model, the more we fit, the less the increase in performance. So at that period, uh, the researchers gradually realized we should train large models. That means uh, we need to train the model on super good computers with very large memories. Then if we fit, more data, the more the better, the performance becomes better and better. So now let's look at how uh, generative AI can generate text. So firstly, we have a prompt. That's the user input that you want the model to respond something. So if I put give, I love eating, then the model may generate by continuing like kicks with the fresh blueberries. When you try again, it may produce like food from different countries. It's different because there are a lot of data sets within the model. It can make many random guesses. So large language models are built by using supervised learning to repeatedly predict the next word. If I gave a sentence. Given this sentence, I love eating food from different countries. Uh, what will the model, so model will learn from this sentence directly. Then when I give, I love eating, it's very likely that it will give me food. Then if I, next step, when it predicts the next word, it becomes a uh, from. It means the model, uh, from this sentence, the model gets many paths of inputs and outputs uh, to train itself. If I give, I love eating food from, it knows the next word should be different. So it will keep predicting the next word. So now we have know the very basic idea of how language models produce, uh, generate new stuff. And I think many people have already 
realize it has many use cases. And that's why many companies are investing billions to it yearly. Uh, all the tech gens uh, invest heavily into AI. And there are a lot of use cases of artificial intelligence in FinTech. We have anti-money laundry and fraud detection and customer recommendations and time series analysis. And for large language models, it can improve the performance in customer recommendations and robot advice and especially chatbots. And within MasterCard, we also use a lot of machine learning and AI stuff. Um, very basic stuff like classification on fraud and risk and prediction on loyalty, personalized card linked offers and recommendations and neural no, natural language processing. And if you have any good ideas or you want to start your own company or you already have a company, then you can approach Start Pass. They may sponsor you or eventually buy your company, then you can become rich. So let's look back on open AI. We know that ChatGPT, uh, besides the language processing or generating uh, images, it also has a lot of plugins. And this is where it can get third party data to, uh, uh, so that the, the responses are not out to, too outdated. And these are all the collaborations done with OpenAI. In the payment and commerce industry, we have, uh, for example, Klarna. Uh, it provides AI-enabled suits of services, including search and comparing prices from thousands of online shops. And in the startups and digital players, we have OpenTable, uh, who leverage OpenAI for restaurant recommendations and booking reservations. The plugin options is only available for GPT-4 in ChatGPT+. Now we can uh, have a look at uh, how to use large language model in an, uh, in an AI project. So normally, traditionally, we view supervised learning for restaurant re reputation monitoring. So we have a lot of label data, like what is in the table. We have input, then labeled output, then we train this AI, train this data on, on using a model. Then we produce the model, we deploy it, run it. And this is the code that we should write for sentiment analysis. But right now, it will just be a few lines like this. We have an instruction text and the review that needs to classify it is within the prompt. Then we have a few lines of code to call the large language model to give a response. This reduces the development time drastically. And the life cycle of generative AI project is quite iterative. So we scope the project, we build and improve the system, then we internally evaluate it, deploy and monitor it, and if there is something wrong, we evaluate it again and build and improve the system again. But how do we improve the system? How do we repeatedly find and fix the mistakes? And after finding the mistakes, how do we fix it? First uh, is prompt engineering. We can give more information, clearer instructions to the model so that it can be a good student and respond with better results. And second one is retrieval augmented generation. If you know your answer is within this book and you think it's better to provide this book to the model so that the model can search from this book directly to give you the correct answer, that will produce better results. This is retrieval augmented generation. And thirdly, fine-tune models. So either you use GPT-4, GPT-3.5 APIs, they provide fine-tuning APIs, and, or you use open source model 
where you can train according to the instructions on their Ruby pages. And lastly, if you are rich enough, you can build your own models, but it's highly not recommended because we don't have, usually we don't have the computing resources. Okay, we have come to the break time. I mean, uh, you may look at the open AI website and uh, create your own keys and also download this code. Don't get read this time and get feedback. Okay, so guys, uh, in the meantime, I uh, download it, and you can also come and get some pizza. So, there's a lot of pizza. Don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. 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 I don't Every time I see people, I have to hold back the picture of people in the whole topic, in the whole in the whole topic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I saw you I think I signed up for the data thing, so it's four or five. I think I For that notebook, will they also don't have a uh, 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 u
Have everybody downloaded? Have everybody opened the Jupyter notebook, uh, collab notebook in either collab or uh, Visual Studio Code or Jupyter notebook? If you can't open, then you can also look at the hugging face. There is something similar to what I will talk about. And you need to prepare a open AI key. Otherwise, you can't run it. Do everybody have an open AI account? If not, then you can open hugging face <laughs> if I choose. Need to take a lot of this. Why do we take it? Let me.
Okay. Next, I will talk about the retrieval augmented generation. However, before that, there are certain concepts we need to be clear about. So, firstly, is embedding. Earlier on, we talked about the it's difficult to make text languages computer readable because it's in letters, characters instead of numerical words, in numbers. So this is the way to make it uh, computer readable. So through an embedding model, we transport text into high dimensional dense numerical vectors so, so that they can be uh, stored in database and also uh, processed by the large language models. Yeah, we are, we are representing, we are transferring a sentence into a vector. We can see that it keeps the semantic meanings after transformation. It's all the sentences with the same meaning are closer in the space. But different meanings will be apart from each other. So another concept is vector database. Such high dimensional vectors mm -hmm. cannot be saved to normal database. So we fit it into a vector database that is specially designed for it. And with such a database, uh, we can do semantic search. So if we give a sentence, it, it is able to retrieve and give you ranked results of a similar sentence within the database. And with such uh, capabilities, uh, we are able to build a retrieval augmented generation system. Uh, if you remember earlier, we talked about this system can help to improve the uh, generative AI responses by providing a specific set of documents that can better answer your target group's questions. So firstly, we have a set of documents. Then we split the documents into chunk size, a uh, small chunk size. Why do we split them? It's because uh, the documents are a long sequence. We can't put in, in order to locate the best the relevant phrase, we don't need the entire thing, right? So we split into smaller chunks. Then we 
use in many models to embed them into high dimensional numerical representations. So you may step into vector database. After that, when user um, asks a question, then this question will be used to retrieve relevant results from the database. So we get the rank results, yeah. and we also have the question. Then we concatenate the results with the question. So we have a prompt like this. Based on the context as follows, uh, answer the question. Then the large language model will present this prompt and give you a final response. And this response will, based on the relevant results, you get that. It is how the response is improved through retrieval augmented generation. So now let's look at the code together. Uh, do anybody have difficulties in getting a key and drawing the first line? Because the API is keep upgrading itself, and there may be uh, different differences between different versions. So uh, when you install a version, install a package, you need to specify the version. <laughs> and this code only works for this version. So firstly, uh, here we are, we are using the 3.5, which is free to use. Oh, at least we have some free product. Then the message provided is your user the content, your question, which is a prompt. The response is in this format. So assuming you are running a business and you get such a review, the banana pudding was really tasty. <laughs> then you ask it to classify whether this is positive or negative. And it can quickly respond to you that it's positive. Then. Because the model uh, is able to understand the language with this rich database, pre-trained data. So this is very easy to understand. Okay. Okay. And it can interpret very long texts. So you, I put multiple reviews here and ask it to respond in a certain format and they can do it quickly. And ask it to count, can also do it. Then we come to the PDF extractor part. This is where you upload your documents. So I use the example from the US. Please don't upload any uh, sensitive information. <laughs> so here I use the very common uh, tool in open. In Generative AI space. It's called Lanching. It, it is the tool that orchestrates all those uh, IOM related tools together. So you can use it to process any documents and uh, 
even connect to vector databases from this single tool. So I ask Landing to help me uh, load this PDF and also split it. This is just splitting according to page. Then after that, we can see that within the pages, there are many new line characters slash n. So we want to remove that. We don't want this happen in the response. So we have the data cleaning and storing step. In this step, we'll further split the each data in each page. We have defined the chunk size to be 512 and overlap to be 25. Chunk size is needed to understand it's just how much you want in each chunk. Overlap is how much you want the two chunks to overlap so that they don't miss out uh, any important information at the age of the chunk. So after splitting, splitting into the smaller chunks, we try to convert it into embeddings for each small chunk we convert to a uh, vector. What we use is a sentence transformer embedding model, which is open source and free to use. Uh, then we load the model in this way, and then we create a vector store from Chroma. Chroma is one of the vector store we can use. There are also others like us and iPhone, uh, but Chroma is open source. Then uh, this database is saved to a file. Okay, now we are ready to chat with your own data. So firstly, we load the local data file into the database. Then we can ask a question so that the vector database can retrieve the ranked similar uh, lines from the database. So I put t equals three, that's why it returns the three relevant content. So what is anyone's widely known for? <laughs> it found that today's widely known for is innovative and reverse education. So we find the exact similar things in time. Another example, uh, what are some divided interest groups? It is quite accurate. But this is just retrieving the relevant content. And to, in order to chat with it, we are concatenating the retrieved information with the question. Then the LM will use that contextual information and to answer your question and output in a natural language uh, that English like this. So, so it will not produce the entire chunk but a nice sentence. To create a chat, um, create a chat model from Open AI, then we build the memory buffer so that uh, we can hit the history. And this is the retrieval chain where we put in the large memory model, which we have defined here. Then the memory, the retriever is the vector database. So we fetch three lines and you can define the search type. There are many different types. So we put a question and then we get the response here. So it's in natural language, the response. So have you are you clear with a retrieval argument and generation now? Like increase the size of the it's not that not possible. Not possible because I'm using if I'm using website, then it's possible. But anyway, they have the yeah, code. Okay, to make it even clearer, uh, I found an example online like this. 
So the first step is uh, to process the document and save the vectors into a database. Then, so you can drag a file here, then it will process for you. The second step, pure chain initialization. You can choose plenty of the models, open source models online. These are all uh, models available and there are many more in Hugging Face, which is this website. So you don't need to pay. It's just the performance may be a little bit better, but worse than over AI. We can pay special attention to Phi2. It is a very small model that can run on CPU computers. Yeah, it can run and response within a few seconds without a GPU. Then finally, you can make conversation with the chatbot. And lastly, we need to remember we should use AI responsibly. So we should ensure that AI does not uh, perpetuate or amplify any biases. That's when you train the model, you don't put anything unfair. <laughs> then make sure AI system and the decisions are understandable to the stakeholders that you are impacting when you build a software. They use another model to decide what to to help to modify to mitigate this issue. Also, you need to protect user data and ensure confidentiality. It's like when you use AI daily, you also need to protect your own identifiable information. Don't link it to any closed source large language model. There are even attacks uh, in Hugging Face, although it is downloaded, but you don't know what will happen. Yes, that's the current things. Then, um, please ensure AI is used for beneficial purposes. And congratulations, we have come to the end of this workshop. Hope this is useful to you. And I encourage everyone here to uh, keep reading on this area and keep an eye on the latest uh, updates. Does that mean that we cannot input uh, something that is, let's say, sarcastic uh, when we are asking him things like, is this a positive or negative thing? Yeah. So, for example, you go to a restaurant, they serve you something like a chicken but it's a very tiny portion. And then after that, you say, wow, the portion is only 